it is Graham here, still living the dream in 2019 in beautiful Penn Valley, Northern California. This trip was only for a week, and if you watched my two videos back, you would have seen the trip I had from Glasgow to London, London to Dallas, and then Dallas up here to Sacramento, where the nearest airport is to Penn Valley. So in this video, I'm gonna take you back from Penn Valley to Glasgow, but from Sacramento to Phoenix this time, across the Atlantic on poor British Airways. And what I'm actually really excited about on this trip is when I recorded, or should I say, when I booked my seat a few days ago, I noticed that it's on a brand new British Airways 787 Dreamliner. So I'm really excited about doing that in premium economy in this trip. And then obviously from London back up to Glasgow on British Airways. So come with me as I make a trip from here in Penn Valley, Northern California, back to my home in Straven. It's gonna be a long one, folks. The idea behind this video is to make my trip report from Penn Valley back to Glasgow a little bit different. So I'm going to document this journey door to door, from Tom and Star's house in Penn Valley to Fiona's and my house in Straven. I did ask Google Maps if I could actually make this journey by road and by ferry, but absolutely there was no way to make this journey from Tom's house in Northern California to my house in Scotland any other way other than flying. So you find me once again in the passenger seat of Tom's pickup with Tom driving, supported by Cowboy, Tom's little wiener dog. On the first hour of my 19 hour journey to my house, this first leg being from Tom's house to Sacramento International Airport. It's only when you visit Northern California do you realize how dry it is at this time of year. And you can understand and appreciate why this part of the world gets so many forest fires. In fact, from where we are now is only around an hour from Paradise, the town that was lost along with so many lives during the forest fires of 2018. And by this point in early November 2019, there have been many forest fires across the northern half of California. Within 80 miles of us was the Napa Valley fires, and there had been even a few localized fires in the area where we were staying at in Penn Valley. And that's why we had experienced so many power cuts during the first half of this trip to California. Just under an hour after leaving Tom and Star's house in Penn Valley, and with our first aircraft landing in sight, it was clear we were approaching Sacramento Airport. And this is where I'd be leaving Tom and Little Cowboy, as I continued my 19-hour journey home to Straven. And of course, this first flight of three, on board an American Airlines Airbus A319 down to Phoenix, in economy no less. I remember during my first visit to the United States back in 1990, or was it 1991, that you were able to check in your bags at curbside check-in, but that seems to be a thing of the past in 2019. So I headed straight to American Airlines check-in, where I said goodbye to my case. Like me, it was heading direct to Glasgow, but I have to admit, I really didn't believe it would get there. After all, this booking was a bit of a strange booking. It wasn't a disjointed booking and my bag would have to find its way from Sacramento to Phoenix, across to London, and then up to Glasgow. So on arriving in Glasgow in about 17 hours time, I wasn't really expecting to find my bag on the conveyor belt. So I made my way airside through TSA, which I have to say was actually a very pleasant 
experience taking only a few minutes. And this brought me to a very quiet terminal. But I guess it was Sunday afternoon and that left me plenty of time to buy some presents for Fiona and Craig. And of course, that all important first pint of beer of the day, followed by what else? But a burger, well, when in America. After lunch and probably the last decent meal I'd have until I got home on Monday evening, it was time to head to the gate where our inbound aircraft had just landed, coming up from Phoenix ready to go back down to Phoenix. Being in boarding group D, I didn't have long to wait at the gate and soon I was boarding the flight which would take 1 hour and 30 minutes down to Phoenix this evening. American Airlines, I guess this was a pretty standard configured Airbus A319. Eight seats in first class and the rest in economy, of course, where I was. Unlike our flight up from Dallas a week earlier, there was no in flight entertainment on this particular flight down to Phoenix. The legroom was average and the seats, or should I say the leather seats, were actually fairly comfortable. As the sun sets over the state of Nevada, it's time for me to say hello to Lacey from West Texas. Lacey was a very interesting girl who made the journey down to Phoenix simply fly by. On this leg of the journey, we flew right overhead Las Vegas. The lights from the famous strip clearly visible from 35,000 feet. However, my little DJI Osmo Pocket camera really struggled in the poor light until we were well into our final approach to Phoenix Sky Harbor. With Lacey on her way to catch her flight to Texas, it was time for me to find my gate for the British Airways overnight flight to London. The great news was British Airways and American Airlines shared the same terminal at Phoenix Sky Harbour. I looked on the board, found my flight, the gate, and soon I was on the 10 minute commute. And if you remember back to my video that I made from JFK back in May and the chaos at the British Airways boarding area during their flights to London Heathrow, well guys, it was quite frankly no better here in Phoenix Sky Harbour. It seemed like everybody was a priority customer and everybody was in a rush to board the aircraft. Well, the inbound aircraft had been late and therefore boarding was quite badly delayed with poor communication. Well, I suppose guys, it is British Airways and they're well known for poor communication. And as I entered the premium economy cabin, I looked down at the back row and my seat and realised there was no window. I don't remember that showing up on the British Airways app. 
as I chose my seat a few days earlier. Well, again, British Airways, pretty bad at communication. So what did I really expect? However, I was very impressed with the legroom and the general space around this new premium economy seat on the British Airways Dreamliner. However, folks, don't get too excited because the USB didn't work. I suppose I shouldn't have expected anything more from British Airways and this really frustrates me about British Airways. They've got this gorgeous new aircraft which cost them a lot of money but they really skimp on the quality of the interior. The pasta on tonight's flight heading home was also pretty average. It was okay, I'm not going to complain, it was pretty standard for, I suppose, aeroplane food. I was impressed that I got real cutlery and not that plastic rubbish that you get back in economy. And somewhere over Ireland, an hour out of London, we got this mixed grill, or that's what they called it on the menu, but the crew called it a full English breakfast. Nah. I'm sorry, we should get them on the Trade Descriptions Act for that one. I know that you can see my iPhone plugged into the USB socket in the seat in front of me, but guys, it simply didn't work. The plug was loose and it didn't charge at all throughout the night. So I left the gorgeous British Airways 787-9 Dreamliner quite disappointed. Again, a pretty average crew and an average service, meaning British Airways are just another average airline. But I know a number of other bloggers have been complaining about exactly the same thing, even the brand new British Airways flagship aircraft, the Airbus A350. British Airways have spent hundreds of millions on a fantastic state-of-the-art aircraft just to fit it out with substandard, sub-quality product inside. Every flight that I was on with American Airlines during this trip that had USB had working USB. So why, why, why British Airways? Can you not just fix these basics? I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, folks, but British Airways is the flight carrier of my country, and therefore I want to be proud of my national airline. Anyway, let's move on. I had only 90 minutes to connect with my flight up to Glasgow. One of the things that really impressed me about transferring with American Airlines, they emailed me the gate numbers British Airways don't, so you have to go looking for the gate numbers and that can be quite complicated and confusing at a terminal as busy as Terminal 5 at Heathrow. However, as you can see, I found the gate and found my aircraft and was soon settling in to the one-hour flight up to Glasgow. So the last part of this mammoth 19-hour door-to-door marathon was the journey from Glasgow Airport 
back to our house in Straven. Fiona collected me after work and we were soon on our way down the M74 in rush hour traffic and this is where I'm going to bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed this representation or this trip report on my 19 hour journey from Tom's house in Penn Valley, Northern California to my own house in Straven, West Central Scotland. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to keep living your dream. Oh, 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 oh,